How you doing YouTube? Welcome to that Nintendo show. A very, or this video is kind of just a grab bag of news you may have missed throughout the week because none of it's super just in your face. A lot of little small things happening in the world of Nintendo as we are hopefully getting close to some concrete next generation Switch news. We just kind of got to do with the little bitty news cycles until they're ready to unveil it to us. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like on it if you do. Subscribe if this is your first time here and let's break down all of the things that you've missed this week regarding Nintendo. First thing, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite video games of all time, which I don't get to talk about very often on this show. I know we're still a, still a new and budding YouTube channel and don't get to hear a lot about me and my favorite games and platforms and all that stuff like that. But for once, I finally get to talk about it. And if you know me, you know that Banjo-Kazooie is my favorite game of all time. And some very exciting, just out of nowhere news happened. They're finally adding Banjo-Tooie to Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, it is on the expansion pack service, of course. You have to be on that tier to be able to get it. But available starting on the 25th of October, you can go back and replay Banjo-Tooie, which I'm in kind of the camp where I still prefer the first game over the second game but I appreciate all of the things that they decided to change to make Banjo-Tooie a more fleshed out sequel where it's kind of more of a, I guess it kind of is an open world slash open area type of game, or at least they just did a really good job of making the hub world seem like a much bigger area than just Gruntilda's Castle did for the first game. But anyway, between that and adding new playable characters, new mechanics where you can split up Banjo and Kazooie into two different characters. Just a lot of this zany stuff. I actually played Banjo Tooie before I played Banjo Kazooie also, which was kind of interesting to go back to, but Banjo Kazooie though is still just stellar game. I play it like once a year. And now I have a easy way to play Banjo Tooie again. So I'm excited to, or give this game another go around because it's been a while since I've gotten to play this one. Moving on to our next small topic. This is for the Pokemon fans out there. So, of course, we know all of this stuff is happening with Game Freak, where their source code and anything you can think of is just leaking out on the internet. And while I don't think this announcement is related to anything that's going on, other than maybe Game Freak trying to put something out there to get people's minds off of the big leak, they have announced that they will be bringing Shiny Meloetta to Pokemon Home, which is the first time that Shiny Meloetta has been available since the Pokemon has existed for 10-ish years now. So to get Meloetta, you have to complete the Pokedex for the Paldea, Kitakami, and Blueberry Academy, which means you do have to buy all the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet before you'll be able to obtain Meloetta. But it gives you a good challenge. I'm sitting over here thinking to myself about when I'm gonna try to make time to get the Pokedex for the DLC done, because I have the main Pokedex done for the game. It's gonna be a nice little challenge. Anyway, if this is something you're interested in, make sure you jump on getting your Pokedexes complete as fast as possible. I don't think that the Pokemon company takes these event Pokemon away, but just to be safe, I would definitely jump on it sooner rather than later. All right, next we have actually circling back around to the Nintendo 64, this company called Analog. They are known for making these premium consoles that are made to play old video games. They up until now had just focused on making stuff for Game Boy. Game Boy Advance, I believe also. But then finally getting into the home console side of things where they are making the Analog 3D. Pre-orders begin on October 21st at 8 a.m. But it's pretty much just a 4K Nintendo 64, plays all of your old original cartridges, does not emulate the games themselves. It emulates the hardware of the N64, is I believe that's the way that they described it. But this isn't like an emulation machine, is pretty much the way that they're advertising this. Now, from what I understand, it does have an SD card slot on it. I don't know how useful that's going to be for anyone who needs it to be useful, but I would imagine at some point that SD card could, slot could be used for uh, things that they're probably not going to say it's supposed to be used for if you're catching my drift. 
It does support original Nintendo 64 controllers, as well as the games, of course. Rumble Pack already built in, 4K output. It looks amazing. It's gonna be available at the beginning for, in black and white. Uh, it is $250, which is actually less than I was thinking this was gonna be. I was thinking this was gonna be like a $300, $400 system. They are partnering with 8BitDo to make a wireless N64 controller that has the ergonomics of a modern controller. As you can see on the screen, they've got pictures of it here where it's just got the one analog stick and the C buttons, but it looks really nice. I'm actually super excited for this. And the controllers are also compatible with Nintendo Switch 2 and PC. So this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be a good time whenever this comes out. I'm already thinking about what games I wanna play. We're talking about Banjo-Kazooie. I've got the original Banjo-Kazooie on an N64 cart and playing this in I know it's gonna it'll output and it'll be in 4k but seeing these choppy old games like that upscaled in 4k is gonna be a little wild something to get used to but I'm, I'm super excited for it and Super Smash Brothers remix if you are familiar with that there's a means to get that on a cartridge so I've been waiting to do that until I could get a hold of this analog 3d because if I'm gonna dial it back to the original Smash Brothers and break out the N64, like why not get the premium N64 and do it through that. So this this is something, they made this for me. I'm super excited to get it whenever it comes out. Finally, for our last thing, we are in a new era of Nintendo Switch 2 leaks. <laughs> As one uh, user on Reddit brought out, we are now talking about Nintendo Switch 2 design leaks but they're drawn in Microsoft Paint, looks like. So this is from Fami Boards that was later reposted on the Reddit Gaming Leaks and Rumors subreddit. It says, a user posts a sketch of the Nintendo Switch 2 in the dock, and a semi-reputable leaker known as Nate the Hate corroborated it, saying that this is kind of right. But as you can see, this is the most jank thing I've ever seen. The left part of this is what they're saying the dock looks like, which for the most part looks unchanged other than it looks a little more rounded off on the back side of it. And then the Switch 2 has a weird kickstand, which I don't know what was wrong with the Switch OLED kickstand and why they wouldn't just keep that. But there's not a lot to go off of here, but it was just, it popped up. Why not talk about this and feature this in the video? Let me know what you think about this design. It's just probably fake. We should just assume it is. I should have started with that. But do you like this design? Is this something that you would be okay with if this is what came in your Switch 2 box? And for the Switch itself, do you like how this kickstand looks? I'm not a big fan of it, but we'll see. It, it'll probably all work out when it's all said and done. Well, anyway, that'll do it for this weekend update video. I am gonna go play some more Mario Party Superstars. I'm having a great time with it. Hopefully, if you're planning on picking this game up, you are as well. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon with more Nintendo news.